Hachette Audio presents NYPD Red 4. Written by James Patterson and Marshall Kahn. Read by Eduardo Ballerini and Jay Snyder. For Jody and Harry. MK. Prologue. The Red Red Carpet. One. Leopold Bassett flitted across the room to where his brother, Maxwell, was quietly nursing a glass of wine. Max, I just heard from my spotter in the lobby, Leo said in a giddy half-whisper. Lavinia is on her way up. Can you stop brooding for twenty minutes? I'm not brooding. I was just enjoying this absolutely exquisite Sancerre and trying to calculate how much this latest junket of yours is costing us. You can stop calculating, Leo said. Because now that I know Lavinia's coming, it's worth every dime. She's the only one we really care about. Then why did we pay $15,000 for the royal suite at the Ritz-Carlton? And what are the rest of these freeloaders doing here besides picking out on caviar and swilling champagne? Max, I don't tell you how to design jewelry, so don't go lecturing me on how to plan a soiree de publicité. If Lavinia walked into an empty room, she'd walk right out. These people are cannon fodder. I papered the house. For one lousy gossip columnist? Gossip? Try fashion guru. People hang on every word this woman writes, every photo she prints. She's a tastemaker, a trendsetter. The door to the suite opened, and Lavinia Begbie entered. Well, well, Max said. Judging by the arched eyebrows and frozen forehead, it looks like the hot new trend is Botox jobs gone horribly wrong. Her face looks like she had a stroke. I hate you, Leo said, and hurried across the room to greet the new arrival and her entourage. A photographer, an assistant, and a West Highland white terrier that Lavinia was cradling in her arms. She set the dog on the floor, air-kissed Leo, and headed straight for Max. Maxwell Bassett, jeweler to the stars, she said, shaking his hand. A pleasure to finally meet you. You're quite the recluse. Max smiled. Leo is a tough taskmaster. He keeps me locked up in my studio designing baubles for bold-faced names. Locked up indeed, she said. The last time I spoke to Leo, you were somewhere in Namibia hunting white rhinoceros. Please don't print that, Max said folding his hands angelically against his chest. Peter hates me enough as it is. Leo, be a dear and fetch me a double bourbon. Neat, Lavinia said. Done, Leo said. How about your dog? Can I get her a bowl of water? Don't bother. Harlow loves cocktail parties. She'll wait until someone drops a bit of food, then she'll gobble it right up. I call them floor d'oeuvres. She turned her attention to Max. Let's talk. It took months, he said, launching into his canned presentation. But I finally found twenty perfectly matched four-carat emeralds. Please, she interrupted. Spare me. Your publicist emailed me all the details, and my photographer will get a shot of Elena Travers on her way to the red carpet. I'm here to talk about the rumors. They're all true, Max said. Leo is gay. I told him you were on to him. I've heard you're planning to get into bed with Precio Mundo, she said. Precio, the big box store? How could they possibly market a brand like Bassett? Mark the $100,000 bracelets down to 89000 and put them in an end cap display? Don't be coy, and don't sidestep the question. According to my sources, they want you to create a line of, Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Sonia Chen, Leo's publicist, stood outside the bedroom door. I've met a lot of leading ladies, but none more stunning or more gracious than the young woman who will be walking down the red carpet tonight at the premiere of her latest film, Eleanor of Aquitaine. It is my honor to present Eleanor Travers. The actress stepped through the door wearing a strapless white Valentino gown that was perfectly set off by Max's latest masterpiece.